Hello, 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 hello. I want to add a few things to the solution of my problem 66. It was the problem that I called how far and how fast the elliptical orbit of an object around the Earth. My solution was correct. However, at the very end, I mentioned something, I, I hadn't, but I mentioned something which was not correct, that was independent of my correct solution. And this slip that I made was pointed out to me by Nicola Arrighi, by Ganymed Callisto, and by Ulf Heller. I thank them for pointing that out to me, and therefore I will say a few more words, and this time do that very end that I added, but now to do it correctly. Ready? So we had a situation, we have an ideal planet like the Earth without any atmosphere, we launch an object with speed 9,000 meters per second with an angle alpha with the vertical and the angle was 30 degrees. And the question was, what is the farthest point of the object to the center of the Earth? By the way, that is called apogee. You can go over my solution. It was published. I used the conservation of angular momentum and the conservation of energy. I find down a second order equation in V. You could also find a second order equation in the distance D, but I chose V. I solve for V, I get two solutions. I get the solution both here at apogee, but I also get a solution here at perigee. The fact that this object crashes on Earth the mass doesn't know that. My ellipse makes the assumption that all the mass of the Earth is at the point source here. Indeed, that would be then the proper ellipse. So, we find two solutions. Each capital V has its own distance d, which is given by this equation. So, I do find that at the farthest point, the speed is much lower than the 9,000 meters per second, 1685, and that happens at a distance of about 17,000 kilometers from Earth. Uh, that's about, um, about two and a half times the radius of the Earth, this distance. Then I get the second solution, which was not needed because this was the answer to my problem, but just for curiosity, I mentioned that. So this is the perigee, very close to the center of the Earth, closest approach, very high speed, 26 kilometers per second, and it's only 1100 kilometers from the center of the Earth. But of course, it's unrealistic because the object will crash here. When I Finish this in my solutions. I said, let's just take a look now at a situation that alpha is 90 degrees. And then I said, well, I don't want to use any of my equations. I will just use my stomach. Well, <laughs> I don't know what I had eaten the night before, but my stomach wasn't telling me the right stuff. And I hadn't. <laughs> okay. What I said then was incorrect, and I'm glad that these three people pointed that out to me. Before I tell you what it would be correct, I want to remind you that this very end has nothing to do with my correct solution that I wanted from you. It was an addition that I made, <laughs> and I regret this addition very much, but it happened. So let's now do it right.
So now, 9,000 meters per second, and the angle alpha is now 90 degrees. This is the angle alpha. The object goes into an elliptical orbit, and notice that in this case, the object doesn't crash. If there's really no atmosphere around the Earth, it would continue doing this. Of course, I use my equations, which are correct. I, this value for capital V holds for all values of alpha, so it also holds for 90 degrees. I find my two solutions. I find perigee and I find apogee. At perigee, I find 9,000 meters per second, and the distance to the center of the Earth is, of course, the radius of the Earth. So that is actually where it's the point on Earth where I shoot the object up. I get also apogee, which is at about 11,700 kilometers. It's about 1.8 times the radius of the Earth. I made this sort of to scale. This is about 1.8 times this. And the speed there is, of course, much lower than 9,000 kilometers per second. It's only 4,890 meters per second, lower than 9,000. That is the correct solution. It follows immediately from this. Had I been more disciplined, that's what I would have told you. But I didn't. <laughs> yes, I feel bad about it. Uh, maybe I should apologize. It was a terrible slip. It was an embarrassing slip. I'm sorry, and I thank the people who pointed this slip out to me. Here you see their names. Nicola Ridi, Danny Metcalisto, and Ulf Heller. And there may have been others who pointed it out, which I do not remember. Trust me, I didn't leave any names out purposely, not at all. This is all I remember. They pointed out that slip, and so clearly I owe them a thank you, and I feel relieved now <laughs> that I have shown you the correct way of, of analyzing the orbit when alpha is 90 degrees. Now, because I made this slip, some of you may say, well, I don't want to, I don't want to be friends anymore with this guy. Well, I leave that up to you. <laughs> I leave that up to you. So if you want to not be friends, I'll have to accept that. It's the price I pay for my slip. Have a nice day and take care. <laughs>